So, welcome to Barcelona. It's not every day that we get everyone together. Minus Sam, because he's uh, not Hol been invited. Holiday, yeah, hasn't been invited. <laughs> After his 720S review. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sam's holidaying somewhere, isn't he? Bulgaria. Um, Bulgaria, yeah. So anyway, we're all together, and often I take the opportunity when there's such an experienced panel in one place to uh, yeah, set it up as a Q&A. Earlier on today, I sent out a post on, on Instagram asking your guys questions. We've sort of lent the topic a bit of a bias more towards um, the actual industry and like the game of YouTube itself. Um, Tim and Paul have definitely got the most experience between us here. How long have you been on it now, Paul? Seven or eight years. Seven it's, or eight years. It's, wow. It's like a proper job Se career. Seven, kind yeah. of. Okay, so it's so now a long time. For so a long time. one yeah. thing I've always wanted to ask Tim, and we've spoken about it off camera a bit, but and I know this is a quite a large topic, but share with us how YouTube has changed since you started. And I know it's a big topic, so maybe some like Earnings. key points, but. Yeah, okay, so firstly, the number of people out there, both in terms of creating content and in terms of watching it. Yeah. If you said the word a YouTuber seven or eight years ago, you would just get a completely blank face because the concepts of this didn't make sense. <laughs> no, no. Uh, what to be fair, sometimes I still get a blank face. <laughs> <laughs> still to the it's, becoming, of the time. it's becoming more and more acceptable. Like, understood. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Um, it's also the way the standard of content, the standard of regular, I guess, vlogging content. You know, the stuff that we follow from some of the biggest daily vloggers, some of the stuff yeah. that some of us make it on occasion. It's, it's changed very much, especially from the content Paul and I made back at the beginning, where we were filming cars driving around. The raw one clip was, file was, upload. Yeah, <laughs> the raw, the raw, the phone, the exactly. phone yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's evolved from the raw one clip file upload to quite, yeah. I think, decently made yeah. 10 That's 15 right. minute videos about whatever it may decently be. Decently a little bit iffy on the uh, right <laughs> side of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I, I, I mean, to be desperately simple about it as well, back then, there was no monetization of videos. That's yeah, a, yeah. a big change in the whole way the platform Huge. itself has evolved. Yeah. Um, Which I guess makes for the community possible. must have been game changing, really. It completely, and it made it possible for us to make content yeah. as a as a job, quite yeah. quite literally, to, to, to be able to say, right, I can devote more time yeah. to creating content with these opportunities than I can do. Yeah, yeah. And and then even still, it's changing all the time, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's mad. Yeah, it's crazy. crazy. So when you first started, what? Why, why were you uploading videos to YouTube? Like, what was that service? Because it was different then. Like, even as a fundamental service, it was almost like a hosting platform. It was. You put a video on YouTube, not for subscribers necessarily to find it, but just because you wanted to share a video and send the link. You, you right. like, upload it and copy the link and email it to your friends. Do you know why you I uploaded to video to YouTube? Go on. Because my phone memory started to run out from all of the video <laughs> files. So I uploaded it to my computer, which then ran out of memory on my family's computer, so I use YouTube as a sort of cloud <laughs> yeah, service. Yeah. It's like a high yeah. you're, a, you're a cloud pioneer. And, I, and, I, and, I'd, and I'd log in and be like, 60 people have seen this. Like, why? why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember exactly that. For me, it's kind of, it, was, it was less of the, I guess, backing up a video, but more of like, hey, this is cool, let's just put it on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. And then you watch the numbers, and now we're talking hundreds of thousands of people yeah, watching yeah. some of these videos. But back then it was like, 20 people watch this today? Yeah, yeah. 20 huge. People? Yeah. I used to think of it as like a classroom. So if 20 people saw it, I was like, that's as if my entire yeah. classroom <laughs> watched this video. And I was like, an entire country yeah, watched yeah, this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Cool. So, uh, yeah, about four hours ago, I uh, sent out a post on Instagram. Uh, Paul, I would say, has become our honorary quiz master, but I actually just gave him the uh, job. So uh, he's gone and picked out some questions at random. Uh, because I think we've had what, 280 comments. About 280. About 280 comments. comments. Hadn't that much time. I did that. I still on going. Still on going. In the taxi on the way to the hotel. Yeah. So yeah, who knows? Uh, so fire away. Fire, fire away. away. Question number one is from Andrew Milne. Fairly topical for all of us. How did we gain the confidence to turn the camera on ourselves rather than film a subject? Well, I think this is really yeah, interesting from Tim's point of view, I was going right? to say, more Paul and well, I, well, yeah, Paul and I started the other way around. Paul and I both started Actually, that's filming true. just cars. And I remember, so I remember trying it because I wanted to make the more traditional kind of videos. So I did those like really awkward. 
I think my first video like this was when you, I, I tried to do these videos a bit more the sort of traditional journalism style. So it started like, hi guys, I'm Shmi, you may have seen some of No, it wasn't. It wasn't even that, it was, hi guys, I'm Tim, some of you may know me as Shmi on YouTube. It was really okay. weird and awkward. <laughs> really awkward. It always is. Like, uh, and I think it even is now. But it was, it just completely changed from filming a car, yeah, yeah. talking, I don't even know. I, th I can't, I mean, I can't, from an outsider's point of view, I can't imagine actually how much of a game changer that must have been. Because you went from a faceless spotter yeah. to a personality overnight. Yeah. And really. you probably had no idea right? how to be on yeah, yeah, camera. Yeah. You do the same. Yeah. I yeah. remember yeah. sitting in a McDonald's talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> <Talking> I, re <laughs> I remember the bath before the McDonald's. Oh, you? Okay. Okay. you were cruising around in your bath and we were talking about it. And, I, and it was like, did, did give it a go, just turn yeah. around, talk on camera. And I think a lot of people that watch videos now and see how we are on camera and yeah. we look relatively <laughs> comfortable, <laughs> but go back to the early videos. So and for anyone that's watching and wants the inspiration or the motivation to put themselves on camera, watch our first videos. <laughs> We're exactly the same as what everyone else. I've seen some of these guys' early videos. videos. <laughs> literally, li I'm literally there in a 4 5 going, this is a 4 5 <laughs> I hope none of my school friends are watching this. <laughs> so it is literally just, it's a learning curve that I think everyone goes through. And the funniest thing is, all of our first videos are there to be viewed. For you to almost get motivation, anyone can pick a camera you up mean, and do it. Have you ever taken any down? I was gonna ask yeah. that. Yeah. You you've never hidden one. You've never hidden them. No. no. Brand no. grooming, pull yeah. down yeah. the old content. I've edited a video once before, which was my first time that I did a piece to camera, and I that never saw the internet. So I didn't okay. put it up and take it down. Okay. It never it saw never the internet. On, yeah. It never, but, it was with a Lamborghini Gallardo Bicolori, which, oh, which is pretty uh, weird. Yeah, cool. Pretty weird. Awesome, man. Right. Serious question out of the way. This question is directed mainly at Seb Delaney because he's such a strong human being. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a question from the Haydenator. Yeah, yeah. It sounds Good serious. Would you rather fight 20 duck-sized seen-through glasses <laughs> or... Ten penguin size Shmi 150. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the best questions <laughs> I've ever <laughs> seen. <It's amazing. laughs> um, um, 20 duck size Sam's or 10 penguin size Tim's? <laughs> I, I, don't, I have no <laughs> idea. He's up this stuff, I man. I have no idea. I'm going to say, because he's not here and I don't want to fight you. <laughs> 20 <laughs> Twenty <laughs> duck size Sam's. Yeah, 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 exactly. Twenty duck size Sam's. One hundred percent. Amazing, amazing. Alexandro Saxio tits this. I have not pronounced that correctly. <laughs> really? Saxio. Alexandro yeah. has asked Mr. JWW because this video is for your channel. What is going on with the McLaren 720s, and when will we see it on the channel? Ah. Uh. I was wondering if you were going to pull out a 720 question. Well, there was plenty of them, yeah, so well, anyone that submitted a question, this is for all of you. We've well, even been getting them on our channel. To be fair to, to, your you, car. to, be fair to se Alex. Sexy Alex, or sexy whatever his name is, and everyone else, every time I put out an Instagram post, every time I put out a video, people quite rightly are asking where the 720S is. Um, coincidentally, about two days ago, I had a meeting with my McLaren dealer, and uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the car has been delayed twice and uh, two days ago I got a confirmation that it's been delayed the third time and that they can't guarantee me a slot uh, until September which isn't a problem uh, but the way that my schedule is going right now I'm not going to be here in September much and uh, hopefully in October all of that will uh, unfold soon but it would mean that the car would be arriving in winter uh, for any of you guys who don't spend much time in the UK during winter. It is not the time that you want to be collecting any kind of car. Uh, not only are road conditions terrible, the car scene shrivels up and dies. Uh, sunlight goes to half it, of its valuable state and basically filming just goes out of the uh, window. Um, and the other reason why I sort of went for a launch uh, spec car was to, the idea was to get the car early uh, to be really one of the first people to give you when guys an insight into the ownership of that car. When was it supposed to arrive? First. 
It was supposed to arrive two weeks ago. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, so backstory, um, for, um, I almost said Ferrari then. Uh, backstory, McLaren's first 400 720s's were known as launch edition cars. Uh, they were sort of pre-configurated slots that you could get, but you couldn't spec them yourself. The benefit of that was, the idea was that because they were pre-configured, they'd already order all the bits and parts to make the car, and so it was going to arrive early. Uh, but for whatever reason, and reasons unknown, uh, those cars haven't arrived. I'm not the only one. There's some guys who are abroad as well who haven't had them. Um, and so I basically said to my dealer that rather than uh, waiting uh, to get the car at a time that I don't really want it, I've, I've pushed my order till early next year so that I can spec the exact car that I want. Now, I still don't have an order date for that yet, uh, but it might be sort of February, March-ish. Which is good time, yeah. because spring really comes out. Spring trips, comes out, road trips, road trips top marks. Uh, and so it'll be a new car during Aftermarket a new exhaust season. companies have already Exactly, exhaust there'll be some time systems. to get some exhaust sorted out. <laughs> and um, you have it exactly how you want it. Exactly, exactly. yeah. Um, actually, two days ago, was the first time that I saw the price list of the options on the launch edition car. I, uh, during the uh, frenzy and excitement of it, I just went, performance pack, that looks cool. Um, so that was uh, back when they launched the car in Geneva. I saw the price list a few weeks ago, and to give you an idea, there was like £40,000 worth of just carbon fibre on there, which I didn't spec. Someone else with the MTC design centre went, this will look nice, and he can pay for it. Um, Forty. So I think when I retrospect, my car again, the spec might change. Um, and oh yeah, also performance pack as well, doesn't come with the glass in the door slash roof. So one of the iconic features of the 720S is the fact that the uh, doors sort of form part of the roof. And when you're inside it, there's this nice glass sort of open space feel, which was lost with the performance packs. They filled it with carbon fiber. So you still felt like you were so in- So you still felt like you were in an LT, really? Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, anyway, long story short, car's been pushed till next year so I can do my own spec. And uh, yeah, so there won't be a 720S on my channel this year. There we are. Next question is from It's Louis C then, following on from this. Okay. When is your goal to buy a Carrera GT? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, 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 it was about five years ago when they were 300 grand. Um, I would love to get into a Carrera GT. To be honest with you, it's not as much the purchasing of the car that as it is the running of it. Now, I, I, as all of us here, I mean, I would say Tim more than most, we put miles on our cars. Um, and I would, if, I, if there was a Carrera GT in my garage, it would be the highest mileage Carrera GT in England within <laughs> within six months, um, which is great. But just to give you an idea of the running costs of a Carrera GT, a cracked windscreen, seven and a half thousand pounds just for the winter and that doesn't come from auto glass and that doesn't come from auto glass no uh lead time on them is like one month if they don't have them that's if they've got one in stock Jesus. um clutch if so the technique of driving a, a carrera gt is you, you're supposed to set off without applying any uh, throttle so you don't get any clutch slip uh one of the sort of uh groundbreaking features of the carrera gt is because it was a the the engine from that car was derived out of a Le Mans car. In fact, in its really, really early days, it was actually an F1 engine, but can that's you fade going way back. Can you fade this out? Anyway, you can see how much I like, <laughs> I like these cars. Long story short, maintaining a car that I would actually use, and right now I'm all about using them so I can share them. Um, so maybe in a few years' time when they're like two million quid. <laughs> <laughs> when you can afford to just run it. When I can it. afford to just run it, but uh, yeah. Anyway, a question for all of us that I think we could probably come up with a combination for an answer is from Mark Damsteg. If you can have the sound from one car, the looks from another, which two would you combine? Carrera GT sound wise. They look pretty good as well. We've just done a CGT topic. Let's yeah. <laughs> let's shut let's up, shut up. Yeah, but I mean, no, I'm, I'm saying, saying the looks, go on. looks of the 177. Okay. Good call. Cool. Looks yeah. smart. It is all. Yeah. It's a good, good I love car. Zonda 760. Looks wise. Do you prefer the, the looks or the sound? Well. That's the thing. Of a Zonda. The looks or the sound? But I, it's, I, I think it's the greatest car ever, ever made. Yeah. So I would say, like, <laughs> it is just up there. that car. It yeah. is up there. But I do get the Aston Martin. Yeah. Aesthetic. Aesthetic. Yeah, aesthetic. Exactly. It's the whole really way they. then you would. If you look at the way they designed that car, it, it has so many sort of mathematical reasons why every shape is the 
size it is. I'm, I'm being a nerd about it. Yeah. <laughs> this is what it's all about. This is this is what this panel's okay. all about. What's really great we've got like what's cool is I anyway watch all of these channels totally separately. When when you get the personalities together, <laughs> yeah, you can, yeah, you can yeah, see yeah. why we have different demographics. Yeah. <laughs> because I would probably say yes, the aesthetics of an Aston Martin, whether it be a 177 or even a Vanquish S, like yeah, they're stunning the looking Gato. car. Vanquish the look amazing. Very but then Shaft. Yeah the 6.5 from an LP640 so that it screams more. I'm not saying that the Aston Martins sound bad because they are fantastic. But it's not a howler. It's, it's not a of a growler. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You want a screamer. You want a screamer. So like an yeah. LFA. Yes. Oh, a louder yeah, LFA. Yeah, yeah. A louder yeah. LFA, LFA yeah. in an Aston Martin body. The LFA sound is so perfect, but it's not loud, loud enough, yeah, loud enough. Right? When it you hear it muted. alongside other cars. Yeah, that's okay, so, okay, so, okay. so I'm going to add an extra bit to it. So. We're going Aston Martin aesthetic. 177 aesthetic. Okay. LFA sound, 812 gearbox. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Drop the mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And paddles good. where you can pull both. Paddles. Yeah, we yeah. 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 Oh, my trick's exhausted. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> Fringe Channel has asked James, your cinematography is always beautiful. What are your steps when editing to improve image quality? And in and I'm adding this onto Fringe Channel. Any tips as to video creation, channel growth, YouTube career? Wow, you could write a documentary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so gonna be summarize. A okay, it. let's summarize it as quickly as possible. Um, so I do as much editing in the filming as I can. So I don't shoot rough and piece it together later. I get what I'm going to shoot in my head and shoot it as beautifully as I can first. And then you've got a nice foundation going forewards to make it look pretty. On your Fewest regular. clips possible. Yeah, because yeah. you yeah, shoot yeah. pretty I'll, much all of your clips. I'll try and reshoot, especially when like walking around the car and talking about stats and details. You didn't want that. If there's noise I'll or I'll try anything. and retake it because it's easier to minimize the edit. Because yeah. normally you do the edit when you get in, you're tired, and you've been yeah. out in the sun, yeah. you know, we're going to be driving tomorrow on a, on a hot day with the roof down. Yes. Your brain Such is a bad Saturday. Got, yeah, I know. <laughs> no, but then you've got the flight home, and then you yeah. get home, and then you've got to edit it. Exactly. Yeah. And then you're like, it's not it's as time easy consuming. as it sounds. And if Sam was sitting here, he's the opposite end of the spectrum to you because he will overshoot everything Every, yeah. 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 and take yeah. six hours to edit it. Yeah. So there are so many different spectrums and techniques. I think as well, one of the thing is, is, I mean, Tim is a content machine, so he's got, yeah. you should see his schedule is ridiculous, and he's been daily, how long have you been dailying for now? Eight, eight months. months. So he's putting uh, a, a video out a day for eight months, the significance of that, I can't, yeah. when you give it a go, you'll know it's what I mean. so much yeah. So, on that standpoint, you might not, and I'm not saying you've got bad quality, what I'm saying is you might not want to put as much effort into getting, like, beautiful, you know, stunning shots, whereas if you're only going to put out three videos a week, you've got more time to edit it and more time to shoot it to make it look nice. So really depends as well on your sort of channel style. Yeah, sure. yes. I have no chance to create a sort of the artistic glamour segments that you might put in because it takes sure. it just takes so long. Your take turnaround is 24 hours. It's just simple. basically yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. One big thing on this is yeah. how every channel carves its own niche. Yeah. If, yeah. If we all let's say if we all did exactly the same thing. It, it wouldn't be as exciting. Absolutely. Just like anybody yeah. else thinking of starting a channel or growing a channel, needs to do their thing, not copying what they see someone else doing. 100%, because that's yeah. where you get an audience by creating new, a new style yeah. of content. I would say to, to to follow up and support that, the worst thing you can do is research someone else's channel and then go out filming. Because yeah. you'll yeah. just look exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you you've got to do, do you. Hundred percent. If you, you watch videos and think, oh, I wish they'd done that, yeah. just go do it. And yeah, that's yeah, all. Yeah. That's all. Hundred percent. It's Jacob. Can you discuss some of the companies you have started? Maybe some insight into what you did prior to YouTube. James, kick it off as it's your channel. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to go in with my with my first job first because it was, uh, yeah. But this all kind of ties in because my first job, and this might be a bit of a a sort of tip almost, is because it was so bad. It reinforced exactly what I don't want to do ever again and so I think that gave me a lot of motivation to really pursue what I love doing um, so my first job was working in a nightclub 
but I was too young to serve behind the bar to, to pull pints and do any drink, uh, do any drink work. So they had me glass collecting and uh, sweeping up at the end of the night because it was a nightclub. At the end of the night, it was five a.m. Uh, you have to do the toilets and everything, dude. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh you. God. I mean, this is a this is a whole story in itself, but. <laughs> Toilet cleaning in a nightclub. I, I mean, video. just yeah. like, you know, I, I don't, not sure I, I have to explain it any further, but uh, there were nights when I would walk in and I would look at shit on the ceiling. <laughs> and the only way it got there is someone must have thrown it. Like, I'm like, <laughs> it's the only way. It's the only way. And that used to happen multiple times. I, I'm like, and, and so I, I, would, I would come in and like the, the guys wouldn't pay me because they, they wouldn't put me on the books and they would pay me in cash. And a lot of the time I, I never get paid and I honestly used to make more money sweeping up the floor collecting the change that drunk people had picked up a dropped <laughs> while they were paying for their drink it was so bad um, so that was my first one that was what kind of motivated me really to not get involved in that side of things um, then you set up a nightclub then I set up a nightclub <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then um, yeah so then I got involved in a uh, industry which I kind of wish I'd have got involved in now but I, I set up a website called Eco Forecourt which was auto traded for eco-friendly cars only so okay. yeah you're so not, you're not welcome here I know yeah <laughs> it was really odd but I sort of I picked up in the press that everything was about going green and CO2 emissions and congestion charges and things and I was like Do you know what it'd be really cool if there was a service where you could filter by CO2 so you knew if you were gonna meet your like congestion charge bracket or you know, CO2 tax bracket. Uh, but I, I launched this website like six years ago and it was a complete flop. Oh, yeah. uh, mostly because I launched the site before having like, any traffic. And so in incentivizing any companies to put their stock on there, they were like, why would I put any stock on there when there's no traffic? And why would any traffic come, come to incentivize anyone to get any stock on there? And uh, yeah, I was just banging my head against a brick wall. Um, and then my, so most people want to know I get this all the time, like how I earned the money in the first place to buy these cars. And I developed and patented a fabric solid that allows you to get a suntan through it. Uh, sounds a bit uh, obscure now and it took like five years. Um, but that initial fabric is originally supposed to go into the swimwear world. Uh, but in the early days of making it, I was approached by a medical university in the states who were treating burns with ultraviolet light and they were saying that when they were uh, dressing and undressing burn wounds is when most of the damage was caused afterwards and so they couldn't treat it with the ultraviolet light without you know yeah, yeah, damaging yeah. it and even though this fabric was supposed to go into to, to swimwear the initial stuff actually went into treating UV burns uh, and then after that project ran out I then put it into swimwear so yeah, I basically created a, a product where ultraviolet light goes through uh, fabrics. And I sort of tan lines are no more. So tan yeah. lines are no more. Yeah. I still have a t-shirt. Yeah. 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 yeah, Um Yeah, and then I got into YouTube because I'm not a massive fan of bikinis. <laughs> <laughs> the first job. My first job, I was selling furniture at a very well-known retail store. Okay. And, I, and, I, and I spent many Sundays yeah. staring at an open store because as you can imagine the demand for sofas compared to everything else that was in the store wasn't that high <laughs> right. and I spent my entire Sunday listening to a CD on loop for about six or seven hours of life I can't deal with this I yeah. can't deal with it but at that time I was still filming in London so I was cool. earning money on this Sunday job, I had a morning paper round that I got up Monday to Friday before school every single day. Nice. I started to fall asleep during my lessons um, while still going to London on a Saturday, but hiding it from all of my school friends. Because at that yeah, time, yeah, yeah. you were like, this a six, is a, a six, yeah. a six a, no, 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 I was just, <laughs> I was just embarrassed. Like a 15 not, yeah. year old kid yeah. going up into Knightsbridge dressed like I was from Watford, which I was, like I was just in like Umbro trackies, like brands really that Knightsbridge had never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was chasing cars. <laughs> like, it that's no why sense. I hid it from my school friends. Pioneers. <laughs> Pioneers. Cool. I didn't sell much furniture then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it, don't worry. Tim, early days. Early days. I, I've done literally a 
unconnected link. So my, yeah. my first thing, I used to sell lots of stuff on the internet, eBay, yeah. anything like that. So when I left school, I started a small little electronics shop, boutique kind of thing, selling cool. stuff through nice. eBay, through the street. Yeah. Then I went and um, decided I wanted to, be a, wanted to be a ski instructor. So I went skiing for a couple of years. Which is where he gets his ski skills from. <laughs> yes, yeah. you must have seen the videos. <laughs> 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 it's it's actually very yeah. impressive. Um, Didn't you damage your back? Didn't yeah, you? then I, yeah, I actually right. broke my back. Oh, oh so I damaged, broke. broke. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, 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 that was, oh, that was, that was quite, wow. quite fun. Okay. Which, by the way, means sitting in Lamborghinis. They have such a hard <laughs> yeah. ride. No, 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 no. Long drives and Lambos, yeah. I can't do. They don't make <laughs> seats for humans. Simple as that. Particularly SVs. Anyway, yeah. anyway. And then, and then I sort of came back to the real world after skiing and um, found myself working in a city financial company, um, which was growing at the time. So I, I found myself progressing up through the company, during which time, just like you, popping around Knightsbridge, I lived in London, so I didn't have to go as far. Popping around London, making videos, squeezing in lots of videos at the weekend to put out through the week, working, you know, eight to eight during the week or whatever. And then yeah. decided one day, why not just give this a go? And took a chance. And it's that yeah, leap. Now here. It's that leap. Yeah. I think that is. Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, it's, it's funny that two people from two different worlds both ended up doing the same car spot. Yeah. 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 And also, not to blow smoke up your asses, but you were probably the original car spot. Right? Pretty there were really? more people doing it before dotted around. And yeah. one of the funny Alex. things is now is that we occasionally get sent, or I occasionally get sent, people's car spotting pics from like the eighties or seventies in Nightsbridge. Wow. And it's right. like yeah, yeah. Exist this back one, it existed, yeah. but it's not, it just, there was no yeah. platform to yeah. share it. Yeah. It's not like on the newspaper. Wow. <laughs> Today in Nightsbridge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam? Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. How old are you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm 20, so I don't um, know. But mine was, was in year nine. Yeah. No, 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 no. I actually got my first job was when was I was a sick 13, job. 14 was a sick job. Different to yours. This motivated me because it was I, I was put into a world that I loved and I was like, I want to stay in this world. But I met someone who developed a software company um, that took care of all of the Mercedes Formula One and FIA Formula One systems. So when you see all the little maps with the F1 cars on the side and all you can this tell stuff. he grew up in Monaco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Paul! I'm trying to get away from him. Anyway, so I met him and I basically begged him to, to like let me help him. And he started, he let me work for him, so I did 12 hours a week after school when I was like 13, 14, and earned you know, a little bit of money. And same thing, then after when I'd earned a bit, I bought a camera and then I would go car spotting. And I met you when yeah, I was like ago. 14 or something. I started doing that and then luckily, you know, I was living in and amongst Monaco where I met a lot of people who had a lot of cars and people would tell me, you know, oh, I'm selling my 430. And then I'd meet someone later and be like, oh, I really want to buy a 430 or stuff like that. And that's when I started going into brokering a bit. So I didn't do it loads. I wasn't like a, a massive car broker. You helped me, again, credit where credit's due, you helped me a lot. The amount of times I would send Tim messages being like, Nick, do you think I can sell this car for this much? Or what do you think of this? Yeah. And uh, I tried to I sell you an LFA. Yeah. Do you remember this? <laughs> I, tried, yeah. I tried to sell I tried to sell <laughs> Tim. How much was it? it? How much was it then, the LFA? I sold uh, that for now. Less than I sold it for 325,000 okay. euros. With 5,000 euro pound currency, yeah. Yeah. very different. 5,000, oh. so it's like double now. Yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah, I told like, yeah, yeah, anyway, you, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. But so that was when I was, what, like 15 or something, and I was bouncing between all these different things, then worked on a few different projects. I worked for an app development company in, in LA for a while, and now more recently I invested in, uh, in an online sort of betting company, which I'm working with now, and YouTube. Site, so. I would also like to say that you're pretty much your entire YouTube archive from 12, 13, 14 years old is still on YouTube. <laughs> oh my god. And yeah. they are out there. Yeah. And they are some And they are amazing. They're not, they're, they're, yeah. I used they're to have, I had a prank they're channel. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to name it, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But literally, I used to go around, there was one video which was me like putting foam on my hand and slapping my friends at school. <laughs> or I, got, I dressed up as Superman or something, used to rugby tackle people to the floor. I was an idiot, but yeah, anyway. So. But I used to, yeah, I started doing YouTube more seriously. I, I dropped out of university to continue the car brokering stuff and came to work with you quite a bit. You showed me the ropes in terms of YouTube and then, then started doing YouTube a lot more. That's the story. Cool. There are stories. Last question. And we'll finish it on a high. Go on. HPH Design Hugo has asked, "Do we have any secret talents?" Ah. Oh, Everyone's frozen. <laughs> secret talents. Secret talents. What does he class as like being able to juggle sort of 
Uh, well, I mean, his suggestions are. Tim like, could do a mean handstand. I, I, you know <laughs> <laughs> I was actually going to say I could do a Rubik's cube in under a minute. Yeah, that's true. Really? Oh. That is true. But and we like, don't have one, a Rubik's cube. Like, 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 yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I've I'm seen impressed. It. I've seen it. Nice. I, I learned right. that on a very long and boring flight to New Zealand, where I just decided <laughs> I was going to crack it. Is it? So Matt, London's or LA, is it? It's it's knowing algorithms. But it's super it's like distracting. No, no, if you want to move, I mean, yeah. literally, like this is. I mean, <laughs> if you watch Tim's <laughs> channel. Yeah. This is the why this, why this surprises me. It's, it's just algorithms. Just, yeah. just algorithms. Maths and algorithms. Really maths, <laughs> just algorithms. No, but you'll be having a conversation with Tim, and he'll just be talking to you like, yeah, yeah, and boom, do this Rubik's cube in like 35 seconds, and I'm like, wow. What? What? How did that happen? Wow. Um, I don't really tennis. have uh, tennis. I can play tennis, all right. You, so can you. You play tennis well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was like, my clocks were working. I was like, hold a minute. What's yeah. tennis? Actually, yeah. 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 I remember the, the, do you remember the we vlog? We made a vlog playing tennis together. Uh, but I think that's, that's all I got. No, but you, you said I was. I had I had the racket, I had the ball, and you go, go on, then show me what you got, and I just hit it and it hit the camera lens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm going to smash my camera. Hit uh, tennis. Uh, I Jay can, I can play you, guitar. Yeah, you can play the guitar, play guitar, and you are a sick drunk dancer. <laughs> Who knew? A sick drunk dancer. Oh, the yeah. worm. You can do the worm quite well. I can do the worm. worm. Yeah. There you go. So drunk. Yeah, drunk dancing fortes. What should I do the worm? That's good. Basically, do the worm. Worm. Do the worm. yeah, that'd be a cracking outro. I've been the question master. <laughs> Supercars of London. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>! <laughs>